Only on NBC 15, we see cameras on cell phones in businesses and in homes through doorbells. It's an increasingly digital world where surveillance seems to be all around us. And when things go wrong, criminal investigators have turned to technology as evidence. As electronics move us forward, we take a look at another kind of law enforcement technique, one that relies on pencil and paper. NBC 15's Michelle Beck gives us a look at the art of forensics. Preserve, what did I say? Life over property, right? A lesson in criminal justice. If there happened to be a shooting. Shows what it takes to succeed in the field. So respond, report to the scene. Quick judgment. Evaluate the scene. Communication. Let dispatch know. Empathy. And say, hey, are you okay? No, like, like really, like, are you okay? And what about fine motor skills? Mitchell Zilkowski will tell you, yes, at times, that too. This is pointy. A lead faculty member at Blackhawk Technical College, Zilkowski is trained in forensic art. I realize there's things that I can do as a sketch artist that some computer programs quite can't, you know, haven't quite figured out yet. These are his drawings, and the skills to create them are always on standby for his other job. Within the Evansville Police Department, he's simply known as Officer Z. Having the time to sit down with the victim or witness who can give a little bit more that, you know, maybe there was a scar, maybe there's a tattoo, maybe there was something with, you know, their eyes or so, some characteristic that was very unique. That's called drawing from memory. And I wanted to see how his drawing and my memory would work together. Ready? For 30 seconds, I looked at a picture of someone I had never met. So let's start with some basic information here. A friend of a friend. And in my description, a white man who looked between 20 and 25. What kind of complexion or how would you describe the overall skin tone? Um, what about his hair color? And what about the hair as far as texture? It looked fine, um, and he had a larger forehead, kind of, and so I think the hairline was farther back. From the questionnaire, we move to books. C27 right here. You could see his eyebrows. That's what I pointed to as the man's most outstanding feature. So many different kinds. And I had to flip through the pages to get there because no brows are the same. Accuracy and where it looks very picturesque is not what we're looking for. Sketch in, in the as aspect of it looks similar too. And if some features are, are somewhat kind of exaggerated or a little bit different, that's okay. The sketch pad was next and it was all about trial an error. The eyebrows too, they could be more sparse and also just kind of longer. Okay, like longer across the, the bridge of the eye or the, the top of the eye. Since he picked up the skill in 2015, Officer Z admits he's drawn only a handful of times for investigations because cameras aren't everywhere and they don't always have the clearest view. Forensic artists say the pencil is an important tool. Yes, that's him. It may not lead directly to an arrest, but it can send investigators down a certain direction. I think we're ready for a side-by-side. -side. What do you think? Let's do it. <laughs> hey. And I see what you're saying with the ears, definitely. Uh huh. Even in a mock scenario where I intentionally studied someone's face, my memory wasn't perfect. No bow tie. <laughs> yeah, but there is still a tie. I knew it. I knew there was something. Yeah, I think we did good. I think, you know, it's something where I would talk with the victim or witness and say, hey, how confident or how much does this look like the person? And then use your own words. If you're like, it's a 100% match, and I believe you on that, like, okay, that might be leaning more towards we could release this. For any sketch, Officer Z says witness memory is most important, then his interview technique. He says his artistic ability comes last. A successful sketch is what? I look at it as the process. So, you know, on face value, it could be that this sketch would lead to identifying the suspect, the person responsible, right? I mean, that, that's where, you know, if you want to measure it that way. I also look at it from the standpoint of maybe during that interview process, we got some additional details from talking to a victim, talking to a witness that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. You got to use what you got. As for what makes a successful police officer, these students may learn that the tools can be as simple as a pencil and a single sheet of paper.
I also spoke with Madison police about how their department uses sketches. This is one example. He's a suspect in an unsolved stranger sexual assault case from last April. The public information officer told me sketch artists from the state are brought in and help for cases about once or twice a year. She said the need for drawings have gone down because digital evidence is so accessible. But as for this case, she adds that officers will continue to investigate any tip they get on it. In the studio, Michelle Beck, NBC 15 News. And to learn about the future of forensic art, we also sat down with Officer Z's art teacher. Carrie Parks says hybrid sketching options are growing more popular. So that's just, it means a tablet like an iPad or, or a Surface could be used to draw a little faster. Also, with the internet, distance is not a problem. Parks says she's sketched for witnesses in England. To watch clips from her interview, we'll have a digital extra on our website, NBC15.com.